welcome back to my channel where I talk all things living an intentional life, productivity, entrepreneurship, and being a mom. So I've been watching these videos about, um, you know, things that people wish they knew or things that they learned when they were 20 and in their 20s and I just I just turned 30 so you know I'm like all excited because 30 like literally 30 has been the highlight of my life getting to this age has been the highlight of my life I know a lot of people dread 30 but I have just been like okay where's 30 for me like <laughs> I've been 30 I, I I told people I was 30 last year I was 29 and I told people I was 30 I don't care I wanted to I've been wanting to be 30 so bad I don't know why is there's no rhyme or reason but here we are so today i wanted to share like things like 20 things that i learned in my 30s and i'm gonna be doing laundry because i said that when i turned 30 i wanted to fold and put away laundry the same day that i wash it we'll see how long this lasts but girl yeah if you know you know for those of you like who are in your 30s already like definitely leave some things that you've learned or like some tips words of wisdom for 20 year olds and if you're currently 20 like in your 20s girl comment and let me know like which one of these resonate with you or what are some things that you've already learned like just because you know you're still in your 20 doesn't mean that you haven't learned anything or you can't add value so yeah let me know anyway thing number one trauma isn't a competition woo so you know lately we've been all going through this great awakening and you know we're all like coming to terms with our trauma we're all starting to get therapy and stuff and i wish i would have known earlier in my 20s that trauma isn't a competition because i spent so much time feeling like the things that i've experienced um because it wasn't as bad as someone else then you know it didn't really matter or you know maybe it's not really trauma or i'm being dramatic and so once i realized that trauma isn't a competition i was able to actually heal from a lot of things i was able to practice a lot of forgiveness which is something that i wasn't doing because in my mind i was like well it's not that big of a deal so i'm not going to worry about it but truthfully it had been bothering me for so long and um i just think it's really important to just remember and to know that like you're not competing with anybody about your life experiences whatever it is and when i really believe that and like let that thing sink in for me baby life just really switched up for me because i was able to look at my experiences from my own perspective from my own lens and be like you know what that was real crappy what happened to me or you know this situation really sucked and it it's showing up in this area of my life i need to heal here and i was able to get therapy and help and i mean it's still a growing process like i'm not perfect and you know it's still a lot to kind of unpack and still work through but it's been really nice to just really come to terms with the fact that like my life experience my lived experience is my lived experience and there's nothing wrong with that okay so thing number two is i am the source of my own happiness this took a long time to figure out i got married kind of thinking that you know oh you know and, and i've always said this about tay i've always said like you know i didn't i don't need to be with him i want to be with him and so i will say like marriage for me it has been a thing where it's like two whole people came together and we've decided to share life experiences um but i think sometimes what happens especially because like we got married like in our mid-20s and so you know like something that happens commonly is like you start to look at or look to the other person for your happiness and i even found that this was like a common theme in any relationship i had been in where i was like looking to someone else to make me happy or looking to someone else to validate um you know why i should be happy or excited or whatever and it took me a while to just realize that I am the source of my own happiness. Like if if I'm not happy within, there's nothing anybody else can do or say that will make me happy. And it's still like a work in progress. Like, you know, obviously with everything, I'm not perfect, but it's been really like freeing to just remind myself like, yo, like if you choose to be happy about this, like you could be happy about it. And it doesn't matter if nobody else supports it or nobody else, you know, is gassing me up. Like I'm gonna gas myself up because I'm the bomb.com or whatever. So I am the source of my own happiness. That's number two. Um, thing number three, say no to things I don't want to do. Oh my gosh, y'all. I don't know if you can relate to being a people pleaser, but that is me through and through. I am the oldest sibling. Um, I'm the oldest daughter. Um, I'm just used to, you know, doing things that I probably don't want to do. And when you're used to doing, like when you're used to people pleasing and stuff like that, it's a really hard habit to break to be like, oh, 
I'm just gonna say no because like I literally don't want to do it but like it's okay to say no to things simply because you don't want to do it and I know a lot of times we feel like we need to have a reason but like I've, I've gotten to a point now that it's like I don't even give people a reason anymore because I don't have to like I don't have to give anyone a reason as to why I'm not gonna do something like if the answer is no the answer is no and just being like really intentional about like not compromising my beliefs or my time or my integrity or just anything like i'm not going to compromise anything just because you want me to do something like it's really not that deep and um it doesn't have to be anything serious like it could be something as simple as like oh your friends want to go to brunch and you don't well if my friends want to go to brunch and i don't want to go to brunch guess who's not going to brunch me um <laughs> because again like i don't have to like i shouldn't be putting myself in positions that I really don't want to be in or that doing things that I really don't want to do especially with all this stuff going on now you know in the world with you know different um sicknesses let's say like that um you know it's just important to like set those boundaries and just kind of be firm to firm to whatever boundaries that you do decide to set in terms of what you will and will not do and I even think about this in terms of like business like sometimes I would like take on clients that I knew better like I knew I shouldn't have taken them on and I said yes I would or I would like do these extra projects and it's like I should have told these people no because they're gonna stress me out you know so okay thing number four ooh, just because they're family does not mean that you have to keep them around or that you have to keep the relationship going so this is something that um you know, we, we've all experienced it where someone has been like, oh, well, that's your cousin or that's your sister or that's your mom, your dad, whatever. Like, and it's like, OK. And like <laughs> just because someone is a relative or related to you, family, whatever, it does not mean that you have to continue a relationship with them if they're toxic or if they cause you stress and anxiety. At a certain point, you have to love people from afar you have to like choose you like that that's that's what it is it's choosing yourself like man i wish i would have chose myself a lot earlier than i did and even there, there's even still people like obviously it's a work in progress right it's not easy to cut your you know your parents off or your sisters off or your whatever right it's not easy to do stuff like that but when you do like you just you just save your mental peace like there's so much peace that happens when you just let that stuff go and don't let people saying like, oh, but that's your so-and-so stop you from protecting yourself or protecting your family. Um, for me, it really clicked once I had King. Once I had my, my first child, that's when it clicked for me like, oh yeah, I'm not going to continue on a toxic cycle uh, and expose you to my child. You You must be crazy, right? You must be crazy. So um, like that that's been something like so I guess I learned that really really late um, and I would just encourage anybody again it's not easy like it's not something that it's it's not easy <laughs> but once you do it like I, I I know that I felt just so much freer and I just felt happier and yeah like sometimes I'm like sad that like oh you know I'm not as close to this person anymore or I don't have like this kind of relationship with this person anymore but at the end of the day you know what I do have I have my sanity I have my peace of mind I have my peace I have my joy like I have so many other things that I wouldn't have or didn't have when I was continuing the relationship with them. The next thing, start paying off debt as soon as possible. Y'all, <clears throat> I'm gonna do another video on my debt because baby, your girl got so much debt, it's ridiculous. Between school, student loans, and um, what else is there? Like credit cards and all that kind of stuff because obviously in my early 20s, your girl was reckless. Like. <laughs> I was in college, like I was living my best little life. So that's one thing that I learned is just paying off things um, or like, you know, as soon as you possibly can. And even now, like I have a car, um, well, I've been at a car, but um, you know, I have a car note and it's like, why wasn't I like aggressively or actively paying it off in my twenties? It's because I didn't know, you know, and that's okay. You know, now that I know better, I'm gonna do better. I'm not gonna like linger on a car note or whatever. So just paying off debt as soon as possible um is like the the it's definitely the wave especially in your 30s like once you i mean uh, granted i've only been 34 weeks so i'm acting like i've just been 30 so long but um like i feel like now that i have a child um it would be nice not to have debt and different things kind of looming over me you know knowing that you have to like put aside a certain amount of money for things that you paid for a long time ago it really really sucks um, and a side note, which I don't know if I have this in my thing, but don't take out debt for other people. Girl, 
you, so I'm paying debt on things that have nothing to do with me. I was paying full blown rent and just, I was just doing the craziest stuff with money and when I was younger. And so I, like my biggest piece of advice is don't like co-sign on a car or, you know, don't, you know, go in on rent with somebody or whatever. Like don't put yourself in a, in a financial bind or, or like financially attach yourself to someone unless you're married, you know what I'm saying? Like, unless you're married, like just keep your finances to yourself. Your bills are your bills. Their bills are their bills and call it a freaking day because there will come a time that you will probably not be together. Um, and you're still gonna have to pay back all the debt. So yeah, that's another thing I learned. Um, you don't have to have life all figured out. Um, I don't know why, like, in our 20s and i think it's just like because like you know you're in college like well, you know i know for me like when i was in college like i felt like i had to have my plan and i had to have like a set life plan child i don't have a job in my field right like what what i got my degree in versus what i do today it's two different things i got my degree in biology um i got my master's in biology well i'm i'm almost done with my master's in biology and then um and then what else did i do i went to medical school like i did all these things and now i'm now i'm a freaking entrepreneur right like i didn't i didn't stay within my field and it just goes to show that like you don't have to have it all figured out in your 20s and your early 20s and I, I feel like you don't even have to have it figured out in your 30s like i feel like i'm just now getting to a point in my life where i'm like oh i know what i'm doing or at least i think i know what i'm doing next so you know it, the, the whole thing is that you don't have to have everything figured out like over time things will just start to make sense and things will just start to click and you will just walk in that obedience and be like you know what this is great like being open to just any kind of opportunity that comes up especially when it's something that you're good at right like going to school it taught me a lot of things that i am able to use in my businesses which has been great right so yeah, that was something else that I learned, which it took me a long time because I spent so much time in my 20s feeling like, dang, I failed. Like, I dropped out of medical school. I, you know, dropped out of all schools, really. Um, I did get my um, undergrad, but like, I, I quit my master's program. Like, there's just so many things that I just like stopped doing. And it was truly because like, it didn't feel good for me to do it. Like, I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I wasn't excited about it. But there were also a lot of lessons that I learned that I'm now able to apply in my current career. And it's been great. And it's like, wow, if I would have like, forced myself to keep on going on that old path or whatever, I wouldn't be where I am today. So in, in essence, like you don't have to have it all figured out today, like it will start to make sense when it starts to make sense. And when it does, then you can just run with it. Oh, this one is a good one. So taking a ton of photos, um, even when you don't feel pretty, um, or when you don't feel put together or whatever, taking photos with your loved ones. I lost so many people in my 20s. Well, not so many people, but I lost quite a few people in my 20s. And when I just like think about them and I look back and stuff, I don't have a ton of pictures with them um, unless it's like pictures when I was a child. Um, and obviously I would love to see pictures of them when I was older, you know, like when I was in my 20s with them, right? And so like one thing that I'm really trying to be more intentional about is like taking more photos, even if I don't feel like I'm all put together. Like it's not always about, oh, how does Kay look in the photo? But like what what this moment represents, you know, like, oh, we had Christmas dinner together. Let's take a picture or whatever. And now that I have King, it's like, I'm really trying to be more intentional about like, not always just being the person that's taking the photo of him but also being in some of the photos because one day i won't be here which is really sad like i won't be here and i would love for him to have photos like of all the stages just take pictures like in your 20s like you're old enough like you know you're not a kid anymore so you're old enough to take a photo take more photos even if you don't feel all put together if you don't feel pretty take photos of your loved ones right like I mean, I know my grandma was not the person, like she did not really enjoy taking photos, but like I have some photos of her and I'm like, oh my God, I am so glad I took this picture because man, like she's not here anymore. And it's nice to be able to see those photos. And I have one photo of me with her as an adult and I'm just like, it's my prized position because I literally don't have anything else. So just take photos, set goals for me, like set goals for yourself, not based off of what everybody else is doing. So one trap that I fell into is that I um, was setting goals that I saw everybody else around me setting. So like my peers, my friends, like they were setting these goals, so then I would set the same goal. And it always kicked me in the butt because at the end, like maybe two months in, I'd be like, yeah, I'm over it. 
and it's because it wasn't even my goal to begin with like it wasn't something that I truly wanted or truly cared about and so it ended up being a waste of my time my effort and my energy so just set goals that are for you not based off of what nobody else is doing even if your goal is lower than or less than or whatever someone else's child please like setting goals that are just for you not based off of what anybody else is doing or saying that is going to save you in every area of your life and even like people that set goals to like get married at a certain time all kind of stuff let it go if it doesn't if it's not truly a desire of your actual heart don't worry like that's not your goal don't worry about it focus on something else do something else all right i'm gonna put these away real quick so another thing that i learned in my 20s is that it's important to find a church home and it's important to just stay connected to my faith and to stay away from people that like pull me out of character um so i actually have a really really good friend she's my sorority sister and um she checked me one day she was like listen i don't like how you act when you hang around xyz and i didn't realize that hanging out with like a like certain people um i'm a i'm a enneagram nine i'm an empath like I'm all kind of things but basically what that means is that i tend to pick up other people's energy and take it on as myself as my own and because of that you know if i'm hanging around ugly people like ugly hearted people you know i'll start acting like that and you know how they say like birds of a feather flock together and it's so true and you don't think about it like because you're just trying to have fun and you know live your best life um but like god really convicted me of like hey you know look at your circle like watch your circle and so um i feel like if i would have like stayed connected because there were periods of my 20s um where i wasn't like really connected to a church home and i didn't really have a church family and church friends and stuff like that and so my faith kind of like took a back seat and so one thing that i learned in my 20s is that like that's number one priority like my number one priority is to stay plugged in um and it's to stay prayed up because that's the only way things are going to work um in my life in my business and anything right is if i like stay connected to god and just stay like stay prayed up because i mean there's 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 just so much that's going on that it's like you really just want to stay connected I, I can't even think of a better way to say it right now but the thing i learned is to ask for help um this is still a struggle still a struggle like i, I really struggle with asking for help um I actually as much as I learn this I still rarely ask for help um but you know it's a such thing as growth and learning you know um but I um one thing that I realized is that asking for help doesn't have to always look like asking a specific person right maybe it means like going and getting a resource so for example when I first had King um I really struggled with like maintaining my home and I mean I'll be honest right now my house looks a hot mess that's why I'm sitting on the floor in a corner because my house is a hot mess um and I was struggling with laundry right I was struggling to do my own laundry and stuff like that and so um I invested in a laundry service and I would do it like once or twice a month and it was like 60 bucks but it was like the best thing ever because it was me getting help um and getting it in a way that didn't make me feel like oh you know maybe i'm like a burden to someone else because a lot of times those of us that don't ask for help it's because we're afraid that like someone's gonna either tell us no or we're afraid that like people will think we're taking advantage of them so those have been both like those have been both my issues my so yeah ask for help and there's nothing wrong with asking for help or getting help uh, i'll say it that way it's more it's not even about asking for help but more so about just getting help when you actually need it um and not feeling bad about like the way you get help so if it's because you paid for someone to come help you or because you asked someone like don't let anybody shame you about like the way that you decide to get help because i mean people will say all kind of things like you know i'm in like different mom groups and stuff where it's like if you get a doula you know it's like not a doula but like if you have like a night nurse or something or a nanny like oh you must think you're you know it's like who cares like people are doing stuff for their own mental health and if you can afford it go for it sis right or call and ask your mom to help you if, you're, if your mom is available or whatever right but just getting the help that you need whether you pay for it right like it could be bougie some some people might think it's bougie like oh she sends her clothes out to the laundry service like okay and at least the clothes are clean you know like so you know it is what it is but at the end of the day like there is no badge or there is no like award for the struggle right for struggling and doing everything by yourself and doing everything alone okay this was like 
<laughs> when I learned this lesson, um, there were several things that happened that made me learn this lesson. Um, but now I'm like a huge spokesperson for this, but nothing is an emergency. Um, and what I mean by this is that if your friend calls you, you know, and they're like venting about something, it's not an emergency for you to jump up and like go save the day or save the situation or, and maybe that's not even the best example, but there, there are times where you will have people in your life and they will always want you to jump every time they call or every time they text or whatever like that. And it's like, nothing is an emergency. Like if it's an emergency, you need to call 911, not me. Um, and when I learned this, um, and I learned this in a business capacity, because in my business, I used to have clients who like, because they waited till the last minute and now I have to act fast. And the truth of the matter is, is that it's not an emergency for me, right? Like it's just not. And so when you start to adapt the attitude of like, it's not an emergency, like nothing is an emergency, things will become so much easier and you'll be less stressed and have less anxiety. I remember when I was working a job and um, I was supposed to be on call and like, granted the job that I did, like being on call, it's not like there was anything happening that was like, oh, this is an emergency situation, right? So um, anyway, I was like on call or whatever and like they were blowing up my phone and I was answering, right? Because I'm on call. So I'm answering the phone and I'm like answering the questions for that and I'm like, yo, like none of this is an emergency. Like you're literally calling because you don't want to do your part or because somebody else hasn't done what they're supposed to do. And now, you know, it's, it has to be my issue. And I then trained my team to be like, listen, this is how you handle problems. This is how you handle situations. And if you wait till the last minute or if someone else waits until the last minute, it's not my problem, right? Like at some point we have to hold people accountable. And so, yeah, um, I always say like an emergency for others is not an emergency for me. Um, now, granted, there are times when like, oh, you know, if someone's in the hospital or someone is hurt or whatever like that, like it is an emergency for me to like go see them and check on them. But even then it's like, what can I do? I'm not the doctor, right? Like, and it's not to be mean, but it's like, if you spend all your time reacting to and jumping and, you know, just bending over backwards for everyone else, when do you take time for yourself? right so sometimes we have to like listen to situations like now i'm getting to a point where i ask questions and it may seem like annoying like dang k like you can't just come here no i can't because i have a whole kid and it's not easy for me to just jump up and do whatever you want because you feel like it's an emergency like when did you find out about this oh a week ago okay it's not my emergency right and it sounds mean it sounds like kind of cold or whatever like that but it's like it is what it is and we have to make sure that like i know for me i have to make sure that i'm not constantly putting everyone's needs and everyone's problems and everyone's experiences above my own right and especially not above um like what's good for my family um because i find that a lot of people um i don't know i don't know how this happens but like a lot of people don't realize that there's life outside of them, right? Like that they're not the center of the universe. And so when you have people in your life that they feel like they're the center of the universe, it becomes really, really hard for them to like see you as anything but um, the moon, right? See you as anything but something that revolves around them, right? And so it's like, girl, this is not an emergency. Like I'm not, it is what it is. So nothing is an emergency and um, also, like, another thing that I learned is that there's so much power in my language. I remember, like, in my early 20s, like, I used to curse a lot. I was terrible in my early 20s, like, ooh, child. Um, I used to curse a lot, though. I used to, like, um, you know, I had a lot of negative self-talk. Like, we all go through it. And I realized that there's so much power in what I say to myself, but also what I say to others, right? Um, and sometimes what I have to say is not worth saying. And that was like, that was really hard for me because I'm the type of person that like people usually come to me for advice and, um, or people come to me and they share things with me and I have to like discern whether or not to give them advice. And so I've gotten into the habit now of saying like, um, are you open to advice? Are you asking me for advice? Are you asking me, um, to listen? Like I ask those questions before I just blurt out any kind of advice. Um, but also just recognize that there's so much power in my words. And so, um, and 
because there's so much power in my words, but then words in general, I'm very careful about the people that I talk to. Um, because like you will have people, and I really experienced this a lot more um, when I got pregnant and when I had King, you know, like I experienced people who maybe they had negative experiences with pregnancy or they had a negative, um, you know, experience with a toddler or whatever. And so it, whenever the conversations come up, they want to give me advice. And it's like, yo, I don't want to hear the negativity because for me, I don't, I don't receive that. Right. Like, okay. I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm sorry that was your experience, but I know that there's power in my words and power in my language. And so I'm very careful. No, I'm very intentional about the things I say and the things that I do because I want to make sure that everything I'm doing is positive, right? I want to make sure that I am always speaking life into my own situations or whatever. So um, there's power in language and it's just important to like not be the person that in it's not on purpose. Like I, I've recognized that some people like they say negative things, but like it's not on purpose that they're trying to like rain on your parade. Like, literally, like that's their experience. Um, and those are the type of people I also stay away from because <laughs> I I just don't have the mental capacity for it, right? So yeah, power in your language. Um, and speaking of said friends or different friends, um, there's levels to friendships. Uh, I realized right, there are gonna be some friends that are like like some friends are situational. So, you know, you you all went to college together. You all took similar classes. Maybe you're sorority sisters or, um, you know, like you're in similar organizations, whatever, right? These are situational friends. Um, once the situation is over, feel free to cut the friendship. <laughs> I know that this sounds like crazy, but I think sometimes like we hold on to friendships because like, oh, she's my eighth grade best friend, um, which I would never cut my eighth grade best friend because she's a bomb. But, you know, for example, like we've been friends since eighth grade or, um, you know, we went to school together, blah, blah. And it's like, yo, if they're not serving a deeper purpose in your life, let the friendship go. Like, it's OK. Like, you're going to make new friends. You're going to make more friends. And I mean, I will say making friends in your like late 20s and 30s like it gets a little harder because i mean i know i'm on the struggle bus with making friends but i, I also have my peace by saying that like i'm not going to keep or hold on to friends just because we've been friends for a long time um so situational friends then you have like people who are like i call lifestyle friends so like right now i'm going through a lifestyle change by having um my son right by having a kid so i'm starting to make mom friends um and it's because we're all in a similar like life cycle and life stage and most of my mom friends end up being moms of toddlers right like smaller like their kids are smaller because my son is smaller um and then you know we'll all grow together um and then you have your lifelong friends right these are the people that you meet and it's like you click and you're gonna stay together forever like my eighth grade best friend friendships they all serve a different purpose like some of my friends i they're my good time friend right it, when, when I want to have a good time, these are the friends that I hang out with. But like, they're not mad if I'm not texting them all the time. They still invite me out and all that kind of stuff. Even though now I say no, it's like they still invite me out because these are my good time friends. Like, these are people that I have fun with. But when you realize that like you have friends that serve different purposes, it helps you to not be let down or feel any type of way about your different friendships or about a friendship with a specific person. Um, because I think sometimes, I know I did this a lot in my 20s where I wanted one person to be all the things. And it's like, it's not fair to put all that pressure on one person to be like the perfect friend. Turn on your bank notifications. That is like one thing that I learned um, in my 20s. Turn on bank notifications and to actually look at your money. Um, I am now really obsessive about how I look at my money. I look at it every single day. Um, I um, also getting over overdraft protection and I set notifications on when my balance gets below $50. Um, and I was doing that in my 20s because obviously like, well, not obviously, but in my 20s, like I didn't make much of any money. Like I was, I was struggling a lot through the 20s. And I, I think that's a common thing for all of us in our 20s. Like we're in college, then we're like getting our first jobs and they're not paying us anything. And so it's like, yo, your 20s are like, some struggle years financially and I wish I would have known earlier about like overdraft protection and notification alerts and stuff like that because your girl was like getting a lot of like um what is it not bounce checks but like um 
what you call overdraft fees and stuff like that because I wasn't and then I was so traumatized that I wouldn't even look at my bank account so my bank account would be like negative 100 negative 200 you know negative whatever my car note was at the time right because I'm just doing whatever and not really paying attention to my money so like that's one thing I learned and now going forward like I have all those things like anytime I open up a new account or um because like I, I do like sinking funds and stuff like that and so anytime I open up a new account I always turn on all those things because like sometimes it's just like a freak accident where maybe a payment comes out a little bit earlier than you expect it or maybe you pay something a little bit earlier and the and the funds aren't where they're supposed to be right like it's not that you don't have the money it's just that maybe just something random happened right or maybe there's like an unexpected expense um or whatever so just having like those notifications it keeps you from taking the l because something that i learned is that like overdraft fees are the devil um i usually don't say things are that um but oh my gosh overdraft fees are like it, it, it's truly the enemy um because it's like i already didn't have the money and then you charge me for not having and I get it, right? Because if, if if there was no check and balance, like people would just always be running up money that they don't have. But it's like, oh my goodness, like you could wake up one day and have like four overdraft fees. Like that happened to me once. I had like four overdraft fees because four different charges went through and like there was no money in the account. So it's like, what the heck, you know? So, um, and then overdraft fees are like $35. So now that's what, 70 and 70, that's what, 140, so 140 extra dollars I had to pay. And it's like, yeah i should have had the money in there but also it's like dang this really sucks because i didn't have the first transaction fee like and now i have this this overdraft fee so anyway overdraft protection always saves your life um and uh and, and then even i think there's a way that you can set it up where um it won't even like the it won't even go through right and that's another good option too so yeah where are the clothes right sometimes like i, I remember in my 20s like and I mean, I probably experienced this in my thirties, especially after having a kid, like I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna buy this. And you know, once I lose this amount of weight, I'm gonna wear it or, you know, like trying to fit back into my pre-pregnancy clothes. Um, and I just realized like, I'm at, I'm at a point now that I'm like, you know what? I bought the clothes, I'm gonna wear the clothes. And if it's not something that I'm gonna wear because of the fit is not right or whatever like that, then I need to donate it. So all I wanna say is wear the clothes. Like if it makes you feel cute, if you feel confident, you feel sexy, you feel empowered, wear the clothes, okay? Remember, confidence is everything. Another thing I learned is to trust your gut. If something feels off, if a person feels off, if a relationship feels off, if a friendship feels off, anything, if you just have a bad vibe, go with your gut because your gut is not wrong. Um, I have yet to have a situation where like I trusted my gut and I was wrong, but I've had plenty of situations where I didn't trust my gut and it all went to crap and it's because like literally you don't trust yourself um everyone has problems and everyone is going through something the sooner you realize that i know the sooner i realized that the better things were for me um, i mentioned earlier about people who think that they are like the center of the universe and it's like we have to also make sure that like we are not defaulting into that you know everybody is having their own experiences their own struggles their own troubles all that kind of stuff and so when you recognize that it allows you to show up a little bit more empathetic um i've always been a really empathetic person but once i really like removed myself from whatever was happening i was able to like show up better for my friends and like be a better person to people in general so it's like really important and i guess it's like not to take things personal um because a lot of times stuff has nothing to do with you and it has everything to do with whatever the person is experiencing so when you realize that like you stop being so hard on other people and you stop feeling like people don't like you or they have an issue with you or whatever because it's like it literally has nothing to do with you and everything to do with whatever they're experiencing right now and if we could all have that same logic <laughs> in life i think things would be so much smoother and relationships could be saved because you would realize that like i know that they i know people say this and it's like supposed to be funny it's like it's not you it's me but like a lot of times it really is like the person right it's them not you and when you remove yourself from feeling like the center of the universe you'll be able to see that like everyone is living life everybody is going through challenges everybody's going through obstacles and i don't know maybe nobody can relate to this but like i know i'm the type of person that i'm like you know i'm quick to apologize if i feel like i've offended someone or whatever 
but a lot of times it really has nothing to do with me and everything to do with whatever they are experiencing and so when I was able to do that I was just able to like take the pressure off myself of feeling like I'm I'm the problem right I'm not the problem right you have your own problems and that's okay last two have fun enjoy experiences that aren't the club um there are so many free things out there like change your world view hang out with people that you wouldn't normally hang out with um this happened for me once i moved from home this happens for a lot of people i think once they move from home um but when i moved from home um i made friends with people that don't look like me um i did things that i thought i would never do i went tubing like now i love tubing like now i love being outdoors but like I literally just did experiences and they were free. Like these experiences were free or like $2 or they were super cheap. Um, but like I, I went and I had experiences that weren't just going to the club, right? The club is fun. Going to the bars is fun. Like whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I can't even sit here and say I didn't do that, right? I did those things. But it's like that there's so much more to life than that, right? There's so much more to life than hookah lounges and all that kind of stuff. Ch like really change, like not change your worldview, but like, broaden your worldview because there's going to come a time where you're going to have a kid and it's not that life ends because my life definitely does not end it but the ability to be able to just jump up and do anything it changes right and so being able to do it in your 20s like I truly feel like in this stage of my life I truly feel like I have missed nothing like I've missed nothing like I did all the things and so if I could just say if I could just give one piece of advice it's to prioritize experiences and yes you may be low on funds but trust me there's a lot of stuff that is free or that are free or very cheap to do um you just have to think outside the box right um i i don't know if meetup is still a thing but i used to use the meetup app and just like join random things like i was going to like improv nights and hiking and just doing the most random stuff <laughs> like when i when i look back at it now i'm like girl what were you doing like you know it just seems crazy but it was so fun and it just really took me out of the worldview that I had and I was a pretty like you know my parents like we travel like we 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 did a lot of things but I was still sheltered in my worldview I feel like after like going through some of those experiences in my 20s like it really just helped me just broaden out and now I'm like ooh. What are some fun things that I can do with King? Like, what are some fun things I can do as a family, right? Just really, how can I blow the lid off of my worldview and do things that maybe culturally we don't do or whatever, right? So that's um, that's one. And then the last one is don't commit to a partner too early. Now, I'm saying this as a married woman, okay? And I've been married five years, four years, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, don't commit too early one mistake this is the biggest mistake that I made well it was several mistakes actually I would commit to one person and I don't even know how to say this but basically they're obviously not Tay right <laughs> you know so I wasted a lot of my 20s um or you know not not, not a lot of my 20s because I, I knew Tay for a lot of my 20s but I did waste quite a bit of time um dating and in relationships with people who you know I was really trying to force them into this mold um to marry me you know because I I was trying to do things you know a certain way right like I wanted to do things like first comes love then comes marriage well like I was just, like I have this like set timetable and what I will say is don't commit too early and especially like how I said earlier about like don't take on other people's debts so what i was doing is i would like commit to this person early and then my love language is like service and gifts and so literally i would find myself paying their bills and you know trying to basically buy their love with money i didn't even freaking have um and that's what led me to say like don't commit too early because a lot of times like i'm not saying that the first person you meet is is not your husband because he could definitely be your husband or whatever right i'm not saying that at all but what i am saying is like notice from the beginning those red flags or notice from the beginning when someone is toxic i'm saying all this to say like don't lock yourself into one person just because like you like a couple of things about them right really be discerning notice the red flags 
talk to your friends, right? I'm not saying you have to have people in your business because I don't put people in my business, but talk to your friends and see like what they think of who you're dating or your partner or whatever like that. Um, but don't commit too early. And here's the thing, there's no trophy for getting married young. I don't know why in my mind, like getting married by the time I was 25, which I was married by the time I was 25, but I don't know why like I put that on myself besides the fact that it is a part of college culture that people don't talk about. People don't talk about um, a part of college culture is finding your your spouse, your partner, right? Because I think, and I don't know this to be true, but I, I suspect that once you leave college, it does maybe get a little bit harder to find a partner because you're not in this confined space where there's a, a surplus, right, of people to date, you know, I, I don't even know a better way to say this, but like, it seems like in college, in college years, in that college bubble, the opportunities are a little bit more rampant than they probably are when you're not in college. Because I will say that like, after graduating college, I wasn't around a lot of men, like I'm still not around a lot of men. Um, I do choose that, but also like, I'm not around a ton of men, right? So I feel like there is a lot of pressure to find your life partner in college but what I will say is like you don't have to settle for the first thing that comes by right feel free to date around I mean I know I dated around I fully dated around and even though I got myself into situations where I committed too early um I still like I would learn the lesson and then I would go and repeat it again so I don't know if I really learned the lesson but I'm saying all this to say you don't have to commit too early there is no like award for getting married first or you know being the first of your friends to get married or um you know there there's just no awards for it right and you want to make sure that you're not marrying someone because some, this is what happens a lot too people will find their partner marry them and then it doesn't work out right and it's because there were red flags that you chose to ignore because you were just so focused on i have to get married right so those are the things that i learned in my 20s i hope this was able to help you um or just like give you something to talk about really so feel free to um share in the comments and let me know what have you learned in your 20s what are you currently learning if you are in your 30s uh please share some wisdom share some things that i probably missed and didn't share i'm just like sitting here doing a whole stream of conscious i don't know but um i think this is really fun and i think it's really important to have conversations like this because i mean the truth of the matter is that I wish I would have watched videos like this in my 20s. Like now that I've hit 30, I've been watching videos about like things people wish they knew in their 30s um, or things that they learned in their 30s so that I can be a little bit more prepared as I go into this new decade. Because I mean, listen, whatever age you are, it's a vibe, right? It's a whole mood. And but there are ways to make life just more like easier enjoyable you know and that's what i want i want ease i want fulfillment i want freedom i want i want all the things and so yes that's it until next time i'll talk to you later darling